Hey you guys, it's your girl Just Behaving. Today I'm back with another video. I know it's been a really long time and I'm sorry, but I'm back with the update and it's been, you know, a couple of months since my last video and I've learned so much. Um, today I'm just gonna go ahead and do a talk through and we're just gonna go ahead and fix my broken nail. And, um, and I did this set myself, you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and fix my broken nail and just have a conversation about, you know, what I've learned so far and things that I've um, accomplished and a walkthrough and we're gonna talk about some things that I need to work on and things that I think you guys should definitely work on as beginners because I'm a beginner as well. And remember you guys, I just started so I'm not perfect. I'm probably never gonna be perfect because no one is perfect. Just, you know, embark on my journey with me and let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, y'all, I know I said that I would show you guys how I fixed my broken nail, but I lost that footage, so I just went ahead and recorded something else. So I'm going to show you guys all my practice fingers, how I practice stuff, and um, how I got the look on my nails on um, the practice fingers so you guys can see. And these are the products that I'm using. I just bought them from a local um, nail supply, and I got um, that from Valentino. And that from Nurical Powder. I don't know what company that is, but I just like how it looks, so I got it. And yeah, and that's just some regular clear um, powder that I got from another place, I guess. And I use number three nail tips on my practice fingers because it gives me enough space to do what I gotta do and it just works for me, so that's what I use. So I just take some super glue and I put it on the tip of the nail and then I go ahead and um, go like a little bit above like the free edge or whatever the case may be and I place the nail tip there and then um, it should be fine and I do the same thing to all fingers just put a drop of like some super glue and I suggest you use like good glue because if you use cheap glue it's gonna take forever to stick and it'll slide around or whatever the case may be so I'm just placing the tip on to the nail And I'm going to go ahead and continue to do that to the rest of the nail. Okay, so now I'm going to put a really thin layer of clear at the bottom because that's what I would do to a regular nail. Sometimes um, the colored powders are really pigmented and it can still um, stain your nails. So I just put clear at the bottom of it, like a really, really thin amount at the bottom of the nail towards where I know I'm going to put the color. And I just spread that out. And it's a really thin amount that I put on. I'm just going to go ahead and continue doing the same thing. So really thin. And then just place it. And just spread it. And I wipe my brush a lot. I don't know why I do it so much. I just don't like getting like monsters in my brush, like a bunch of acrylic stuck in my brush and then it messes up my brush. So I just wipe as much as I can. And do the same thing with the thin clear layer. Thank you. 
And um, I went ahead and put some glow in the dark powder inside of this um, acrylic and I mixed it in with clear. So I'm just activating the glow in the dark powder that way my nails can glow. Um, and I just activate it for like, you know, two minutes or whatever the case may be. Just so I can make sure that the glow in the dark powder is activated and it really causes your nails to shine. So you guys are going to see here that I did two nails. They were ugly so I'm not going to show you guys that one. So on this nail... And the other two, I'm going to show you guys what I do. So I put um, a thin layer of the color that I want to use to ombre with. And I'm just going to go ahead and spread that on the nail. And then I just do like a really, like, you know, medium, small, medium bead. And then I add, you know, some more, whatever the case may be. After I get my desired amount and I notice, you know, how the color is looking, I put a little bit more so that it can be more pigmented and not, you know, fading or whatever the case may be. And I know you're not supposed to spread up, but that's what I was taught. But, oh well, I gotta do what I gotta do. So I'm just moving that around and getting it where I need it to go and cleaning up where I need to clean up and trying to keep... Um, the acrylic in like the perimeter of the nail I don't like where my acrylic goes like drips around the nail I try to get as much of the excess off so I don't have to file and shape too much Same thing, just um, a small to medium bead, and then um, just work it down or whatever the case may be. I try to work wet with um, doing ombre because I just want it to spread and move how I want it to move. And I don't want it to set too fast, so I make my beads really wet for um, the ombre. Remind you guys, I'm just learning, so this is what works for me. People may have, you know, other techniques on how to do it, but this is what works for me. So, yeah. And I'm just getting the color to where I need it to be. Wherever it looks like the nail is still clear or it's not pigmented, I'm just adding a small amount of color to it. That way I can get the desired look that I want. Okay. So as you guys can see, I'm just trying to get whatever is stuck in the nail or not supposed to be there out and get it flattened to where I want it. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag it down. Now the same thing, just getting it to where I need it to go and then dragging it down.
Sorry, I took it out of focus, y'all. I was just looking at it to see, you know, what was going on. So now that we're done with this part, I'm just um dipping the brush into the monomer, and I'm just trying to wipe off that excess, like that yellow color. And I'm gonna go ahead and just um get rid of that um monomer as well as get a new napkin because I don't want to dip my other colors, especially my clear into that yellow monomer it's gonna look so ugly like pee so I'm just getting rid of that so what I do I just um wrap the paper you know like in a circle and then I just put it in there to soak up all of that monomer and I twist it around to get any like of like any particles or acrylic powder whatever stuck at the bottom of my dappin dish out after I do that I just refill it and then we're on to the next so now I'm just taking the nude color and I'm putting that where I want it to be. And I'm trying to perfect ombre like it's a work in progress for me. It's not perfect but I mean it's something. So I'm um, just placing a bead around the apex and then I'm just wiping my brush continuously and as you guys can see that yellow is still there like it just doesn't want to go away but it's not going to do anything because I changed the monomer and then I'm placing my cuticle bead and y'all this is another thing that I got to work on the cuticle area like that is the most difficult thing to me I can't wait till I master it it is so hard sometimes I have a good day with my bead placement and I don't have cuticle issues and then on some other days um th the cuticle area is just going everywhere spreading everywhere I don't know if it's my ratio I don't know if I get nervous once I get to the point of doing the cuticle I just get like cuticle anxiety like it's just the worst but I'm working on it in due time we gonna get it together And then if I notice that my ombre is not um, to my liking, I just go to the um, bottom part and try to add more of the nude to make it blend a little bit more. That's why I don't really use um, that many beads. I mean, I'm sorry. That's why I don't use like two and three beads. I'm like a as many beads as I need type of person. I don't limit myself to just two and three beads. I do what works for me. And I try to go like the strategic way or the way that people teach me it doesn't work out for me because I like to do things in my comfort zone so I'm just doing the same thing just trying to create the ombre And another thing which, um, that I'm realizing is that the whole let gravity pull things down, it works. You gotta just tilt the nail sometimes and just let gravity do its thing and I'm starting to learn how to do that. Sometimes I get to panicking when I'm doing um, nails, like I don't know, I just want it to look nice so I just get to panicking I get to like, you know, dragging and pulling the powder down and I don't let it settle for itself so I'm just learning to like you know chill out a little bit let gravity do its thing and if a mistake is made you can always go back and fix it you can file it down just practice practice and practice
And um, sometimes when I swipe up, it's because I don't want to take the ombre down too far. So I just go the opposite way to try to level it out. And one thing that I like about practice fingers, um, you can like move the nail around as much as you want. I don't like that hand, like not the silicone hand, I forgot what it's called, but like the practice hand, the brown one with the nubs, I don't like that. I never bought it because I didn't like it. But I, now I'm going with my Valentino. And usually I don't practice with this, but I'm, I don't know, girl, feeling bougie, child. But... I'm just going to use that and I'm going to only put the Valentino, like the clear, on the bottom portion and exactly where the ombre starts. That way when I get to buffing and filing, um, I don't mess up the ombre or take too much off. So I just go ahead and just cap what I did um, from the bottom. I don't go to the top of the, or the cuticle area because I just feel like I don't need it there. I just go to where the color starts and where the ombre is that way I can go ahead and um get that locked in and then when I file I could just file it and buff it and it won't um, mess up the ombre that I did and with ombre I work really wet but I think I work really wet overall but I don't know but definitely with ombre I work really wet so I'm just capping that And I'm using like small beads, like I don't use big old beads and stuff. And I'm going to continue to do the same thing to the rest of the nail. And I keep wiping because I don't want to get any of that yellow into my clear acrylic. If I see something, I'm going to take it off before I place it on a nail or whatever, you know. And I'm working really thin, like I said before, just really thin, and I'm just trying to even it out, that way I don't have to file too much. So if I take my time on this part, it's because I don't want to spend forever filing or have like a lumpy, bumpy nail, so I just work really small and wet so that I can get the product where I need it to go, and then I can shape it and be, you know, at the top, okay? Okay.
with this nail, I put a lot of clear um, acrylic powder. So I was just trying to get that thing evened out. But I think I put a little bit too much. But it was cool because it's just clear and I could buff it down. But that's why I work really small because then I have to, you know, keep on playing with it until it sets and settles. So that's why I work really small so it can dry and not move around. And so I don't use too much product. And now we're done with that. So as you can see, I guess something was up. So I had to go back and make it even steven. And I know it looks lumpy and humpy, but remember I'm not putting any clear like that on the cuticle area because I'm going to buff and file even up shape okay so now that I'm done with all three I'm just gonna go ahead and cure them in the light I don't know if I'm supposed to cure I don't know if I'm not supposed to but I just do it because it has the glow in the dark powder in it so I just cure it so that it can hurry up and dry so I leave it there for like you know two minutes and I just let it harden and cure and that also activates the glow in the dark and this is um the ring light that I bought my ring light I'm sorry y'all the lamp that I bought and I bought this from Amazon for $44 you can fit two hands at the same time and it really saves you some time on curing you know and you can do it like for your petties you can just like take the bottom off and I really like this um LED lamp light whatever it's called I'm gonna go ahead and put the link at the bottom of the video for you guys so that if you guys are looking for a lamp you can buy this one I mean it's a cool lamp And it's the UV LED lamp. So I'm just um shaping the nail right now. Buffing and shaping and doing all of that. So yeah, I can't get that recorded because I don't know. I'm going to figure it out how we're going to get that done. But and I'm just going to go ahead and just wipe off my little table. And now for the top coat, I just got this from Amazon as well for ten dollars. Um, I guess it's called Emily. Emily, I don't know, but I just bought it because it had good ratings. And it was ten dollars. I'll put that link at the bottom. It's pretty good. And one thing that I've learned with um top coat, like if you do a thin layer, it'll be stronger than doing just a big glob. And I don't like doing a big glob of um top coat because it can like change the shape of your nail and I also wipe down the sides of my nail um, after I top coat if I see it looks a little bit wonky or whatever the case may be but a really thin layer of um, gel top coat goes a long way and it makes it stronger and it cures faster and better I'm just wiping the sides if I see that I you know it's messing up what I got going on And I just go really thin. I don't like put a big old glob or you don't see it hanging down. I just go really thin and just swipe and pull down. But with regular polish, you have to use like, you know, a big glob and, you know, float it on. But with gel, just swipe it and you should be fine. <clears throat> oh and again um the smell of this um gel top coat this smells strong like i don't know but i do not like the smell <laughs> And I'm sorry about this cuticle on this one, y'all. I wasn't really focused on the cuticle. I was just focused on, like, just getting a little effect of the ombre. But like I said, that's something that I have to work on. I'm a beginner. Do not chew me out. Thank you.
And sorry for any background noises. I have a very noisy household. So I'm just going to go ahead and cure that. Um, it says that you can cure it for one minute or 30 seconds. I don't know. But I just cure for two minutes. Like it's just a habit for me. I just do it just to do it. But I think with this, I just did one minute. And as you guys can see, our ombre is done. And it's cute. Yes. <laughs> Honey. And then, I just pop them off. And this is the exact reason why I put tape at the bottom of my um, practice nails. That way I can practice as much as I can. Um, if I do like five nails, I'll just pop them off and then, you know, do another five and it'll be done really quickly. And then my nails can stay clean. I don't have to soak them in um, acetone and waste acetone and money. I can just use some tape or some minx coat strips. And then we in and out. We practicing, we're being productive, being proactive, and then we can continue practicing. So, so that's pretty much it. And you guys are about to see how it looks when it's glowing in the dark. It's vibrant when you activate it for two minutes and then after you put the acrylic on the nails and you cure it, it causes the nails to really, really, really glow in the dark. Um, you can see it like vibrantly at night. If you go to the club, girl, your nose is going to be popping, popping 10. But thank you guys so much for watching my videos. See you guys next time. Bye.